Hello students, this is CP Prashant from Kendri Vidyalaya Ganeshkin Pune. The second session of solutions. In the first session, we had discussed about Rolls law, ideal and non-ideal gases, azeotropes. Now in Rolls law, we had learned the relative lowering of vapor pressure, which is P0 A minus P of A divided by P0 of A is equal to XB where Xb represents the mole fraction of a solute. Let us first of all see how this expression can be used to find out molecular weight of a substance. You know Xb is equal to Nb divided by Na plus Nb which can be written as Nb divided by Na provided the solution is very dilute. Now this is an assumption we use. Suppose the solution is very dilute, Xb will become Nb by Na compared to Na number of moles of B is very very less for a very dilute solution. In that case, Nb can be written as weight of the solute divided by molecular weight of the solute. Na can be written as weight of the solvent divided by molecular weight of the solvent. This is equal to relative lowering of vapor pressure P0A minus P of A divided by P0A. Measuring the lowering of vapor pressure, if you know weight of the solute that we have dissolved, the molecular weight of the solvent, the solvent which you have taken, the weight of the solvent which is Wa, you can find out molecular weight of the substance Mb. This is how you find out molecular weight of a solute. Now let us see how the vapor pressure uh, influences the boiling point of a substance. You know boiling point of a solution of a, of a liquid is let us say water. It boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Now the question is why does water boil at 100 degrees Celsius? It is because it is the temperature at which the vapor pressure becomes equal to atmospheric pressure which is one atmosphere. So as you all know the vapor pressure when becomes equal to one atmosphere a liquid boils. In the case of water 100 degrees Celsius the vapor pressure becomes equal to one atmosphere therefore water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. Now let us see how the vapor pressure affects the boiling point. Let us try to understand that by plotting a graph. Let us represent temperature on the x axis and vapor pressure on the y axis. Let us say this is the room temperature which is 25 degrees Celsius. You have pure water. At 25 degrees Celsius, let the vapor pressure of pure water be at this particular point. So this is the vapor pressure of pure water. Let us uh, increase the temperature. You know as you increase the temperature, the vapor pressure will also increase. So you get a new point on increasing the temperature. So you keep increasing the temperature the vapor pressure will also increase. When the temperature reaches 100 degrees Celsius, if you see the vapor pressure, you will see that it is one atmosphere and you will see that at this particular temperature water boils because at 100 degrees Celsius water boils. Now. In, into the solution, suppose we dissolve a solute 
which is non volatile let's say the solute is b solvent is considered as a as you know the moment the non volatile solute is dissolved it will occupy part of the surface rate of evaporation will come down vapor pressure will come down so if you see the vapor pressure at 25 degree celsius the vapor pressure will not be this value it will be a little lesser because as we dissolve a non volatile solute the vapor pressure decreases because of this reason now if we increase the temperature of course the vapor pressure of the solution will increase it keeps increasing on increasing the temperature and it follow a graph like this as you can easily make out the temperature at which the vapor pressure becomes equal to one atmosphere for a solution is more than 100 degrees celsius which means the solution boils at a temperature more than 100 degrees celsius this temperature difference let's denote that with a delta t b is called elevation in boiling point elevation in boiling point so with a non volatile solute dissolved the boiling point increases there is an elevation in boiling point elevation boiling point corresponds to the depression in or the decrease in or the lowering in vapor pressure which means more the lowering more the elevation so the graph clearly indicates that the elevation in boiling point delta tb is directly proportional to the lowering of vapor pressure which is represented with the p0a minus p of a let's write that as delta p which is lowering of vapor pressure so can we say p0a minus p of a divided by p0a which we have derived already the relative lowering of vapor pressure is equal to xb as per also this derivation we have done in the last class can we say p0 of a minus p of a is equal to p0 a into xb this being a constant what it actually means is p0 a minus p of a is directly proportional to xb which means lowering of vapor pressure is directly proportional to xb we have clearly understood that elevation in boiling point is proportional to lowering of vapor pressure from the graph look at these two expressions elevation in boiling point is directly proportional to lowering of vapor pressure lowering of vapor pressure is directly proportional to the mole fraction of the solute if this is proportional to this which is lowering of vapor pressure which is in turn proportional to xb which is mole fraction of the solute can we say elevation in boiling point delta tb is directly proportional to xb so what you have understood is elevation in boiling point is directly proportional to mole fraction of the solute more the solute more the elevation which is also clear from the graph as the amount of the solute increases this elevation also increases the reason is the lowering of vapor pressure keeps increasing so elevation boiling point can be written as directly proportional to mole fraction of the solute now let's see how we can use it to find out molecular weight of a substance so that gives us an expression delta tb is proportional to xb so can we write delta tb is equal to proportionality sign can be uh, replaced by a constant let's say it is kb to show that it is boiling into xb kb the proportionality sign here is called mo molal elevation constant 
let's try to understand why it is called a molar elevation constant. Let's say delta T B is equal to K B into X B can be written as N B divided by N A plus N B, where X B is the mole fraction of the solute. Therefore, delta T B can be written as K B into N B divided by N A for a very dilute solution. We have taken an approximation here also. We assume that the solution is very dilute. So, number of moles of solute with respect to number of moles of solvent is very less. Therefore, N A plus N B can be written approximately equal to N. So, this can be written as K B into N B divided by N A can be written as weight of the substance A divided by molecular weight which can be taken here M of A. Now, this and this together makes a constant which is written as K B. Let us convert this into just K only. This into M A makes another constant we call it K B. So, this K B is characteristic of the solvent A. So, it can be written as K B into N B divided by weight of the solvent A that is what delta T B is. Now, this is number of moles of solute per weight of the solvent. Let us assume that weight of the solvent is in kilograms. As you know the number of moles of solute per weight of the solvent in kilograms represent molality. I will quickly explain the meaning of molality. You take 1 kilogram of solvent and if you dissolve 1 mole of the solute, the solution is 1 molal. So, molality represents number of moles of solute dissolved in 1 kilogram of solvent. Let us also quickly see the difference between molality and molarity even if we have studied it in 11th standard. In molarity what we do is if you want to prepare 1 molar which is represented with the capital M 1 molar solution of a substance. Take 1 mole of the substance in a, term, in a uh, container make it remain in dissolve in 1 liter solution. We are not adding 1 liter of solvent. Dissolve 1 mole of substance in the solution, the total volume of the solution makes 1 liter. So, how you actually do it is you take 1 mole of substance, let it dissolve in a little amount of water, make up the solution to 1 liter, the total volume of the solution becomes 1 liter, volume of the solution is 1 liter. 1 liter solution now has got 1 mole of the substance. Therefore, it is called a 1 molar substance. The difference being that we have the total volume of the solution is 1 liter. Here we have solvent is taken as 1 kilogram. 1 kilogram of solvent has got whatever number of moles of solute, that number of moles is called molality of the solution. Whatever number of moles is present in 1 liter of solution, is called a molarity of the solution. If 5 moles of substance remain in or made to dissolve in 1 liter of the solution, 5 becomes molarity of the solution. So, having understood the meaning of molality, now with uh, N B divided by W A represents number of moles of solute per weight of the solvent in kilograms, which represents molality. Therefore, this can be written as K B into small m which is delta T B. This, this is taken as K. This, uh, the reason why K B is called a molar elevation constant, if we have to define K B, we can write delta T B is equal to K B when molality of the solution becomes 1. So, for a solution whose molality is 1, find out elevation in boiling point 
that elevation boiling point equals to the constant. This constant is called molar elevation constant. The reason it is called a molar elevation constant is it is elevation in boiling point of a solution whose molality is 1. So, um, this is how K B is defined. Now, let us see how this expression can be used to find out molecular weight of a substance. Let us uh, uh, expand this expression delta T B is equal to K B into N B can be written as weight of the substance B divided by molecular weight of the substance B. W A can be written as I am sorry into W A. So, this becomes K B into M B divided by I am sorry W B into M B into W A. Suppose the weight of the solvent is taken in grams, you know to convert this into kilograms, you will have to divide this with 1000. So, that 1000 will come here because we are substituting for molality. Molality represents number of moles per weight of the solvent in kilograms. In case this weight of solvent is taken in grams, to convert the grams into kilograms, divide this with the 1000. So, the expression becomes delta T B is equal to K B into W A M B in the 1000 divided by W A. W A is in grams, specifically that has to be understood. Now, this expression can be used to find out molecular weight of a solute. You just need to calculate the measure elevation in boiling point. Let us say we take W A grams of a solvent. So, W grams of the solvent is known to us. The solute we dissolve in it, let us say it is W B. So, this term is known to us. Whichever solute is dissolved, we are supposed to find out, we are trying to find out molecular weight of that particular substance. After dissolving W B grams of the solvent, so let the weight of the solute dissolve with W B grams. Now, we know the weight of solute dissolved, we know weight of the solvent we have taken, we are trying to find out molecular weight of the solute. The only measurement you have to make is find out elevation in boiling point of the solute elevation boiling point of the solution. So, delta T B is the only measurement that you have to make. Once delta T B is known to us, W B is known to us, W A is known to us, molecular weight of an unknown substance can be easily dissolved, easily found out. But how do we get the value of K B? As we have understood, K B is characteristic of the solvent because K B we get by multiplying K, the proportionality constant with M A proportionality constant K with M A. So, K B is characteristic of the solvent. So, how do we get the value of K B? 